Hey guys, it's Rogway here and it's time for another tutorial. And today we are looking at some intermediate, I would say, uh, techniques for video editing in our course. Um, we are going to start with iMovie, which I feel is a very basic video editor, but it does have capability of doing great things if you have good video to work with. So we are going to start by clicking iMovie down here and we're going to be presented with a window that shows us the different videos that we've been working on. All right, now, you may get a different display message when it opens up. It might say get started or might have a different message up here. Um, but I, what I want you to do is go to File, New Movie. Now, iMovie has these great little pre-made videos in here. The problem is they're a little too automatic and way overused so we're gonna stay away from that we're going to just create a video with no theme and we're gonna hit create we're going to call this one Audi and I want to start off by saying before I even get started that I take no credit for the video that I'm using as footage for this tutorial I'm simply showing how to use iMovie to create something pretty awesome uh, again, the video that you use to create yours is totally up to you. Uh, again, I just want to show how video can go together very nicely when you have nice video to work with. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. I am not sponsored by Audi. This is just something I enjoy because I really like their car. So I'm going to explain quickly the layout of this window as we see it. Uh, up here we got all of our menus. Uh, here we have the projects. We can go back to the projects that we have worked on. We also can import uh, camera video from our computer. Uh, we can also show or hide the media library, which is on the left side here. Um, so this is our projects. This is our libraries, our iPhoto, our iMovie, uh, all the different libraries that we have available to us. And in here is where we store all of the clips that we're going to use for our movie. Now we could just click import and bring them all in at one time. We could find them on our computer, but we're not gonna do that. Uh, for this particular video, we are going to import them in a certain order. Um, so let's get started. Before I continue, there are a couple windows I forgot to talk about, I apologize. At the top, we are in our media window, we have audio, we have titles, backgrounds and transitions. We'll be looking at what all of that means. Over here we have our little preview. Shows us how our video is going, how it looks. Down here, the most important part of it all is your timeline, where you can put your video together, change the order of it, do whatever you need to do to it. All right, this is where it all happens. This is where all the magic happens. Over here we've got a zoom slider. Very, very important. As your video gets longer, you'll want to zoom in and out using this. And we'll talk about that in a second, too. I've got a folder called Audi Commercial, and um, this should be available for download in the description um, if uh, you want to follow along with the files that I have. Inside here, I've got um, the finished video, which I'm not going to show you because that will kind of ruin the surprise of what we're creating. Logo music, raw footage, and sound effects, okay? We are gonna look inside raw footage because that is what we wanna start with. We've got tons of videos, uh, again, from an Audi commercial that I've broken apart here, and we are gonna put it, assemble it in a certain order, all right? So let's just take a quick look at some of these clips. Again, professionally shot. If I click one and I hit the space bar here on the Mac, I can get a little preview of what those clips look like. All right, they're all in little pieces. And again, if you were shooting a video and you were referring to your storyboard, uh, these would be all the little pieces, jigsaw pieces, uh, jigsaw puzzle pieces that need to be put together in the right order to make something that looks awesome. So that's what we're doing. All right, so let's start. We're going to start with Audi Enter. All right, this is the video right here, and we're going to drag it in. Now, we could drag it directly to the timeline. That works too, but I like to store all my videos up here in case I want to change the order or whatever. 
Now, when we click the video, okay, I could double click it or I can single click it just to select a part of it. I want to double click it to select the whole thing. You notice this little plus symbol comes in. That is what allows you to move this video down to the timeline. We could also click and drag and move it down that way as well. Okay, but it's easier in my opinion to just click the plus and down it goes. Now this has now been added to our movie timeline and you can see that we now have a video clip that is 7.4 seconds long. It's the first clip. You can also see right here, tells us where our uh, timeline stopper or little uh, indicator is at in the current movie. So right now this is sitting at three seconds out of a possible seven seconds. Like I said, as this starts to get longer and longer, we're going to have to zoom back so we're not so uh, zoomed into our movie. Now, there are advantages to being zoomed in. You can stop it on a single frame, okay, but we want to stay a little zoomed out while we're editing here and then get into the fine details later on. Okay, let's look at what we can do to this clip. We're going to select the clip and now it is surrounded by a yellow outline telling, um, telling iMovie that it's the clip we want to edit. We're going to look at some basic color correction and that's basically these two windows. We've got color balance, we've got color correction. Okay, Color balance will allow us to set the white balance of our clip. We'll talk about that later. Uh, skin tones, we can go with auto if we really want to. But we're going to go to color correction. And I happen to know that all the other clips in this video tend to be very cool. Uh, so we're going to move this slider right here more towards cool. And you can see what that does is it shifts all the color either warmer or cooler depending on what we want it to look like. So we're going very cool with the colors here. All right. Instantly, it has added that cool effect to the entire clip. And we can watch the clip just by hitting space. That's what I did there. I moved, the, moved it to the beginning. I hit space. And now we can see it with that effect added. Why is that useful? Well, you can get all sorts of neat effects by adjusting the color of the, uh, the video that you're using. Or it can help to make your clips look like they belong together better. All right. So, you know, you've got all sorts of stuff here. You've got your brightness. You've got your uh, hue slider and saturation slider here. And you've got your temperature slider. These are all really important to change the color of the video. Now, I personally don't like a video that just kind of comes in right away. This, is, this one's not bad. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to transitions here. Transitions are a great way to move between your clips in a nice way, usually by blending between the two, okay, or to fade out to black or to white or whatever. And there are some crazy ones that iMovie comes with, and I stay away from these, but some people like them. All right, so you can see you got all sorts of crazy ones, and as you scroll over them, they show you what they're going to do. We're going to go with a cross blur at the start, basically just blurs in, and I'm going to drag and drop it at the start of our clip. It's not even very noticeable, but what happens is those lights just kind of blur in, and that's what we did. All right, and then our video starts. I'm going to go back to my raw footage, and I'm going to add the one called Heartbeat. It's right here. I'm going to put it in by dragging and dropping it into here. All right. Or, like I said, we can go back to my media and drag and drop up here. Now, I think if I drop it here, it's going to go into my media anyways. Yes, it does. So that really doesn't matter what you decide to do there. So we have a straight cut between this and this video. They just cut between each other. No transition in between. Just goes from one to the other. All right, next what we'll do is we'll add the one called Face Off. And let's drag that in. We can see that he is facing off with what looks like a car in front of him. I'm going to go back and add a transition now to put these two clips together a little better because when I look at it, it's just a straight cut. 
So I'm going to go with a cross dissolve in between those two. And we'll take a look at how that looks. Those two clips blur together. Makes it kind of interesting. And then we have that face-off shot uh, that came up next. Now we're going to add eye twitch. So that's going to go in. We now have it zoom in on this guy's eyes. Cool. I'm going to go back to this clip face-off that I just added. And I'm actually going to shorten it a little bit. You can see that it's at 3.1 seconds. I'm going to adjust the length of that clip by going either to the front of the clip or the back of the clip, depending on where I want to take some time off. So I'm going to pull it down to 2.8 seconds off the end, just to shorten it up a little bit, and just to show you how to use that trimming uh, part feature of the program. Next, let's go to face off two. Let's pull that in. And we've got that happening right after where the camera kind of stops right there. Okay. Let's just take a quick look at what we have so far. We'll go to the beginning. We'll hit space. We've got the cross blur. We've got the color correction on that clip. We've got a fade into that. We've got the face off. We've got the eye shot. And then the face off continues. Right. It's looking good. Next, we're going to go spin up. I'm going to pull that in. And we can see that the car is starting up. It's spinning up. Okay. Now you'll notice we're starting to get close to the end here, so we got to zoom out a little bit. Or we can use the mouse scrolly wheel to scroll over in our video. So we can do that as well. Depends on what you prefer. Okay. Personally, if I'm doing close edits, I'll get right in there, you know, as close as I can, so I can see every frame by going all the way to the right. But when I'm just kind of putting them together, I'll zoom out a little bit so I can see the entire video in its yeah in its entirety. I'm going to add pan, and we got this nice shot of the lights of the vehicle, just like that. And I'm going to add pan. Two, we get this nice little side shot of the vehicle like that. Great. Okay. And if at any point I feel like a video needs to be adjusted, let's say I feel like this one needs to be a little bluer because the other clips have been really blue, I can click that and once again I can go up and adjust my color on that particular clip just by pulling that slider over. Quick and easy. Like I said, I can use these to adjust the brightness of that clip as well. Okay, I can adjust everything, the saturation, all of that can be adjusted up using these sliders under color correction. Very useful. All right, I can also go to cropping if I really want to cut a part of it off, which I'm not going to do, uh, but that's pretty handy as well. All right, so we're getting somewhere. All right, now next one is engine. And that's this clip here. We're going to put it in. And we got this kind of above shot of the engine. Now let's say we want to add an effect to our clip. We can easily go up to this little window up here that says clip filter and audio effects and click that. If we had sound on this clip, which we don't, and the reason we know that we don't is otherwise there would be some waves of sound underneath in this blue area we could add an audio effect or we can click the clip filter and choose one of the clip filters that are pre-made here you can go black and white it gives us a nice little preview of how it looks as well uh, so there are some crazy ones we're gonna go with blur on this particular one so where is it blur or sorry glow not blur we had a little bit of a glow to this particular um, clip all right, now you can pick whatever you like. Uh, I'm really just showing you the different filters that are available. There's quite a few. Next, let's go to lights. So I'm putting in lights. And you'll see that it gives us this little shot of the back of the, the car, the lights here. Nice. We're going to go to clench, which basically all it is is this guy clenching his fists 
And what we're going to do for this one is we're going to adjust the white balance. So we're going to click the first one, color balance. We're going to click white balance. And we're going to click, the way this works, you're going to click with the eyedropper until you find a nice white balance for that clip. What is white balance? Well, that actually isn't a lesson all by itself, but white balance is basically the color tone for the entire video that you're looking at. Very common in photography that you adjust for white balance uh, the color of the light in the scene. It'll take out any strange casts. And in this case, what I did is actually made a little bit more blue than it was originally just by clicking in this shadow area here, and I'm going to hit OK. You can experiment clicking in other areas and see what you get. All right, so there we go. Oh, it looks like looks like it didn't do it for some reason. I'm going to try it again. Uh, down here, yep, yeah, there we go, and I'm going to hit OK. You can adjust how much. I'm going to hit OK. There we go. Now it took. Perfect. All right, so that's looking good. Next, we're going to go to back. All right. And these I'm going to actually add fairly quick now because it is pretty repetitive. We're going to go back. We're going to go to zoom. Actually, there is one adjustment I want to make on zoom. Okay, zoom. It zooms into the car. We can see what kind of car it is now. It's an Audi. Okay, and if you know anything about cars, it's the R8. I'm going to click it. And I'm going to, on this clip, do two things. First of all, I'm going to make the clip cooler by adding a little more blue. And I'm also going to slow down the zoom into the car, okay? So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna click the little time speed button up here. And I'm gonna set the speed for slow. Now you'll notice what happens is there's a little turtle that appears. It means we're slowing down the, the clip. We can adjust how slow we wanna go with this little dot that appears. We can go really slow or we can go fairly quick. I'm going to go to one second. Keep in mind, this is very important. If the video is not shot with 60 frames per second, you are going to get some stutter. All right, it's not going to be perfect, uh, but let's take a quick preview of this one. It jumps a little bit. It's not perfectly smooth. All right, you have to shoot with 60 frames per second to uh, be able to slow down your video two times uh, slower need to have twice the amount of frames. Speeding up, not as big of an issue. Slowing down is when you start to see some jumps. Okay, so be aware of that. Next, we are going to go to spin. All right, we're putting spin in. And again, I'm going to go pretty quick here now. Engine fast. I'm going to put in front spin. Okay. And face off fast. Again, I'm doing these really quick. Just want to say one thing while you're in the program, and I'm adding all these clips now pretty quickly. At any time, if we're not sure if we got the order right or we're not sure what video was for which file, especially if you have a movie that's got hundreds of clips, you can always click the little info button up here. And you can check, and it'll tell you the name of that file, when it was created, how long it is. All this stuff's useful when you're putting it all together. So we know that we left off on face off fast. Next, we're going to put in back fast. Okay. Heart rate. Okay. Eye blink. Again, I'm going pretty quick here. And then... Uh, we can take a look. These are all short little clips. Okay, it gets kind of intense at the end here. This one here might need a bit of a color uh, adjustment to make it a little more bluish so it matches the other ones. Again, these are little adjustments that can easily be made. Next, we're going to go zoom back. Car zooms out. Spin stop. Basically, the engine stops right there. It spins up, and it stops right there. And then fade. Okay? And at this point here, once I add fade, we're going to just take a quick look at what we've got. Okay, so let's go to the beginning. Let's take a quick look at what we got. I know at the end, 
I kind of threw them in really quick. Hopefully you caught that order. Um, you can always pause and go back if you messed up. Here we go. Whoops, 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 whoops. Not that it matters, but here's the beginning. Okay. Door opens, guy comes in. We got the color correction on that. Fade over to that. Fade to the face off. Eye twitch. All right. Car spins up. We got this little pan across of the lights. We change the color on that. Okay, car's running. Side view of the nice Audi intakes. The glow on that. All right, we got the lights. Again, clench. We did the white balance on that. Slow down on the zoom in with a little bit of stutter, unfortunately. And like I said, at the end, things kind of happen quick. Engine stops. And we've got this fade back so that now we can see the car that we were only able to see in the dark before and parts of. Okay, so nice. Now, what we want to do is we want to actually have the title for what this video is all about. So we're going to go to backgrounds and we're going to put in a black background. Now, there's all sorts of pre-made crazy ones. I like black and white or I can make you can make your own custom colors too. I'm just going to go black. I'm going to pull it into the end and you'll see that nicely that black is added. We don't I don't particularly like it going straight from the car to black, so I'm going to go to transitions and I'm going to just put a cross dissolve between so that that car fades to black like that. Okay? Nice. Now let's add a title so go to title up here and we're going to add a expand title. Actually, hmm, maybe not in this case. Um, let's use the standard title and pull that over top of your black background. Now the one complaint I have about iMovie is that it, it has a lack of customization for your titles. It bothers me should be able to move them around and do whatever, but it's it's tough to work with titles because they are kind of preset. You can scroll over and see what each one does. You can change the fonts and that stuff pretty easily, but you can't really move the text wherever you want. It's kind of locked in to where they have it. If anybody knows how to adjust where the text is, I'd love to know. Anyways, double click the title right down here. We're going to take the text out of this one. We're going to take the text out of that one. And in this one, we're going to put introducing the 2016 Audi, oops, Audi R8. Introducing, sorry, I should put the new 2016 Audi R8. Now, that was quick and easy. Uh, I'm going to select Audi and R8, and I'm going to put them bold. And I'm going to choose R8, and I'm going to set that to red. So you can see that it's fairly easy to make adjustments to your text. Uh, you can also change the style of the text here, and change the size of the text here. Most importantly, at the end, you have to click this little red checkbox to apply the adjustments that you just made. And there we go. Now we have this title introducing the new 2016 Audi R8. I'm going to increase the background, uh, black background a bit. That's the nice thing about everything in iMovie. You can increase or decrease just by trimming the ends of it. And now we're going to put the Audi logo in. So if I go to the logo folder, you'll see that we have a PNG of the logo. Why PNG? Well, PNG is great because we can use transparency. So we've got a black, uh, so we've got a background that is completely clear. And you can see that if I drag it in and I put it over a video clip, for example. Okay, iMovie does some weird things, by the way, automatically. We're going to fix that in a second. But you can see that there's no background on this particular logo. I'm going to move it, though, after the intro text. And I'm going to shorten that clip just before the end, just before the black. Now, like I said, it looks really weird because it's doing some kind of zoom in, zoom out. There's an easy way to fix that. You click the image, go to overlay settings, which is right here. 
set it to picture in picture, then go to the cropping adjustment, set it to fit. Now go back to the overlay settings and you can move it wherever you want, okay? And you can easily adjust the size of this to whatever you want as well. Now the nice thing I like about iMovie, I'll be honest, is that it fades in and fades out titles and logos and pictures and stuff automatically so it looks pretty good right off the hop. They don't have to make any major adjustments. Kind of preview that end here. All right, transitions between the two. Now we could add a little bit of space in between. You can see here that we can adjust the fade in and fade out the same as we would with music. It's these little dots, these little radio buttons that allow us to do that. But I'm going to just show you how that looks now. Fades out to black, and that would be the end of this particular commercial. All right, now we have no sound. We have nothing. I'm just going to show you the last little bit so we can see how it ends with the titles. It goes to that, fades out, title comes up, and Audi logo comes up. Nice. Let's say we want to start with the engine sound effects. So we've got the car spinning up here for the first time. Right at this clip, it starts to spin up, which would be really neat for us to have some engine sound as that engine speeds up. It is very common for people creating video to have the sound supplied separately. The reason for that is when you are doing your raw footage, the sound oftentimes will not be perfect uh, unless you're doing like live documentary or whatever. But whenever given the chance, it's better to do overlays rather than trying to get the sound on the spot. So we've got Audio RA Engine Rev. One little thing about the Audio tab here is this will come from your audio library. So it's harder to use this unless you have all of your sound effects inside of your iTunes audio library. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this Audi R8 engine revving sound. Let's listen to it. Nice. Okay. And we're going to pull it into our video right there. And we have it now set to where the car starts up. Okay, so if we listen to that, right there. Now for the rest of this, we have the engine revving, got the tires spinning, you can clearly hear the sound of the engine, hopefully you can hear it over me talking. And we've got a few more revs right there. And at that point right here, boom, engine should stop because the tires stop for a very brief second right there the end of that clip the tires stop spinning which means the engine is off that's where it needs to stop right when that engine stops right there so we've got our marker there we're now going to drag our audio clip over like so and we are going to have it line up with where our marker was to mark the end. And let's just check it out. Let's just test it. This is where I'd like to be zoomed in as much as so I can get it right on that frame. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the end here. Okay, it sounds very abrupt. It ends very sudden, but it won't matter because now we're going to put in our music Okay, so in my folder called Music, I'm going to drag this song called Extreme Action in. And once again, thank you for this uh, music. Again, found on YouTube, great music. Uh, goes really well with this commercial. And I'm going to end the music with the end of the commercial. So I'm going to pull that so that it lines up with the end of the commercial. And let's just do a quick little test to make sure it's working. Yeah, and we can hear the music now. Um, I don't like when the music just starts abruptly. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this little radio button in and I'm going to go to about um, 0.7 of a second. Same on the end. I'm just going to pull it back a bit, uh, maybe a whole second on the end. And that will just allow it to fade out nice and quietly. All right, so I'm going to go to the start. I'm going to do a little preview of it and check how it looks. Here we go. Okay, that looks awesome. All right, now one thing about iMovie is it automatically saves. We don't have to worry about losing what we've done. Um, unless it crashes, you might lose a little bit. But uh, generally speaking, it, it saves pretty often. So now what we're going to do is we are going to render out our video. Uh, we're going to go to File, Share, File. And I'm going to share this now to my desktop. But we're going to get a window that comes up here asking about how we want to encode the video. It gives us a size estimation. Oh, I made a mistake. Cancel. You need to have a clip click down here. Otherwise, it will just export the video that you have selected up here. So click down here, File, Share, File. Once again, we're going to put Audi Commercial. Or I can just put Audi, doesn't matter, it's Audi there too. Resolution 1080, quality is high, we could go best if we want to, you know, to be perfect. We can go faster or better quality, better quality is going to take longer, but it's going to look better. And when we're happy with these settings, again, I'm just doing this for speed's sake, we're going to hit next, and it's going to ask us where we want to save the video. Before I do that, I just wanted to mention that, uh, I'll hit cancel for a second. If I go to share, I can go to other social media sites. Uh, if I have a YouTube account, for example, or Facebook, or whatever, um, I can export that way too, directly to my social media. We're just going to go to file for now. And we're going to go Audi. And like I said, we'll just go quicker here, just so it's a little bit faster. I'm going to put it to the desktop. I'm going to call it Audi, and I'm going to hit save. Now, a lot of people close iMovie at this point because they think it's done. All right, it looks like it's instant. But what actually happens is up here in the top right corner, you've got this little clock that starts. And basically, it tells you that it's making the video. It's going to take about three minutes. So it is working while you can continue to work on your file. You've got to be careful and make sure you don't close the program. Let it do its thing before you can actually watch the video. So I'm going to come back as soon as this is done and we're going to take a look at what we've got. Okay, and we are back and you can see now that it's telling me that it is successfully exported. So I'm going to hit close. I'm also going to close this so I can see it. It's on the desktop. There it is. And now when I play it, um, I'm going to have the nice high quality 1080 version of the commercial. So just one last time, let's take a quick look at it uh, in its HD entirety and uh, then we'll finish up. So here we go.
Okay, so that's about it. It looks great. Got the video uh, exactly how we want it. Again, I take no credit for the video. I found it all uh, online from another commercial. Um, but it shows you the basics of iMovie, how to put stuff together. Again, it may not be the greatest video editor, but given the you know type of footage you have, if it's shot professionally, if it's shot well, you can actually do a lot with iMovie. Uh, and you have a lot of control over it with a very simple uh, user interface. Anyways, I hope you found that useful. Again, apply some of these techniques in your own work. Um, if you like what you saw, click the like button down below, comment, subscribe, and I uh, hope to give you guys more soon. Thanks a lot.